This is Night Force Action Report for Tuesday, August 13th from HorribleNight.com. I'm Justin Lacey. Joining me this tonight is Ethan Moses. Hey guys, good to see you. Hi. And with tools in hand, Jason Thompson. How's it going? <laughs> Tiny tool. <laughs> me without <laughs> my hardware. <laughs> This is the editorial video game podcast from from Horrible Night, uh, where we get caught up with the games we've been playing and pitch some games at the end of the show. So, but before we do that, um, Jason had a silly week without the internet. What the hell is that like? Uh, awful. Um, basically, like being ten years old again. The worst, sort of. <laughs> I remember, Actually, being, I remember being, 10 being ten being awesome. <laughs> well, being ten with like. Every adult responsibility. Oh, okay. That Ooh. would do. Yeah, not Ooh. good. So basically, Tom Hanks and Big, which is ironically bringing things to a... Wow, thing. that explains your <laughs> tiny tools. <laughs> but he got some He got some nook-nook in that, that movie. Hey, I got a wife. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that noise... Was that, was that a good noise? I don't either. <laughs> but I make it a lot. I think that's why people are uncomfortable around me. Especially so. your wife. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's why she left you. Oh, I didn't notice you're being patriotic there, Ethan. You like that? I need to put. I've only got that monkey behind me, so we've got power pads, American flags. Uh, so what? Yeah, so what have you been up to, Jason? Well, got the internet about mm, two days ago. Um, just been playing catch up with uh, pretty much everything since I uh, went to Dallas with my wife. What was that? Two weeks ago. Three weeks ago? It seems like a year ago. Yeah, it was a long time. It's a while ago. It's two um, shows ago. <laughs> by the way, Arkansas does indeed suck major ballage. Yeah. yeah. He... We drove through Arkansas on the way there. On the way back, we avoided it. Good. <laughs> at all cost. Because um, you were in less every, of a rush to get back? Every rest stop was actually torn down. <laughs> Everyone's leaving. Not Everyone's just, in Arkansas. <laughs> not just closed rubble and it wasn't tornado rubble it was they just i guess they figured like i the only thing i can sort of chop it up to is uh maybe like a budget issue and since they didn't want people like living in those places instead of just boarding them up they were just like ah screw it we'll just tear it down tear them all down tear them all down (laughs) we don't have any money tear all the buildings down tear all the buildings down (laughs) yeah and there was literally eight exits within Probably 120 miles. Oh, Aaron might have a good. Is this is the next fallout going to be taking place in Arkansas? Maybe it is that should. What they're doing? That would be a perfect location. <laughs> maybe that's what the, those rest stops were. They were just vaults, and they were just trying to hide them. <laughs> but ser- seriously, it was it was pretty awful. Um, my birthday, I turned 30 while Way I was gone. Way to go! Congratulations, yeah. you did it. Everyone's impressed. Yeah, and my father-in-law bought me a grill, so I feel nice. like a real real man now. Did it come with those giant and tiny tools? <laughs> <laughs> For my birthday, I got a grill you, and a selection what, of both giant and tiny tools. What would you no. do if your father-in-law gave you a gift of really tiny tools? Well, he <laughs> he has bought me tools before, but not on the tiny side of things. Okay. <laughs> it's like, I don't know what that metaphor means, but it can't be good. Yeah, he actually bought me a, a cordless drill for Christmas. Wow. Which is so he has, useful. somewhere Do around you here. Use those things, or, or is he just kind of like, look, dude. <laughs> no, I use them. Yeah, okay. I use them. Because okay. my family buys me like power tools and stuff, and they're like, okay, I start acting like these, a dude so now. I'm go. like, oh, you stop. I'm going to go flip some flapjacks. No, I use them all the time. <laughs> How's the grill? Have you tried it out yet? Yeah, it's nice. It's a Weber. So, Ooh, yeah. Nice, nah, very nice. It's been good. Um, good grill in summer too. So, yeah, I was actually going to use it tonight, and then you guys wanted me on here. So, <laughs> ruining everything. <laughs> podcast maybe guest guest spots. I've got some brats that I need to to fire up. So maybe you I'll can, do that after. You can just like take the take the webcam with you and just hang, yeah <laughs> grill and talk about video games. I could probably show it to you if I dragged my webcam over to the window. I could probably show you what it looks like. But no, actually, <laughs> it's. <laughs> It's a really nice one. It's um, it's one of those that comes with like a stand that you can take the grill off the top of it, so you can go and tailgate with it. 
Oh wow. Which is really nice. And you can it it's it's not huge, but you could probably put a whole turkey in it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So but also hide those turkeys in walls. Yeah. True. True. So yeah, so I've been playing with that, getting sort of acclimated to, you know, grilling, I guess, with that. Uh, it's propane and it has those like smaller propane tanks, mm-hmm. which is really nice. Because yeah, they're have not those as for like our, for our tailgating as well. Yeah, so those are those are really nice, and then you can also put an adapter on it to get a bigger tank if you want it. So, um, do, you have, just, do you have big and small versions of everything? I do. <laughs> I do. It's quite a unique um, At, superhuman ability. No, well, at compl- any given time, he could be transported to the fourth stage in Super Mario Three, so he wants to be prepared for that. <laughs> nice. No That's complaints it. from uh, my wife. <laughs> Like a Swiss Army knife. Um, <laughs> Ethan, what's been going on with you, man? Oh shit! So, um, well, I'm I'm home alone for like the next two weeks. Um, it's yeah, it feels like that. I've actually been setting traps. It's kind of scary. I'm not gonna lie. When I'm did a that grown s- man? When it's, did that start for you? Uh, just on Sunday or, okay. or just, no, yesterday. I took my wife to the airport yesterday, and it's only been like yeah, it's been le- uh, just about twenty four hours, and I, I don't like it. I don't like yeah. to be by myself. It's this flat is old and spooky and big, and it echoes. And I think there's someone in this house. I you know like there's all these weird things happening. I hope it's not Joe Pesci. Well, I hope it's not Joe Pesci either. If it's, yeah, I hope to God it's Get not the Joe Pesci. Get the man. Do you have a healthy <laughs> supply of micro machines? <laughs> if, if, if Joe Dude. Pesci and Daniel Stearns shows up, I'm gonna fucking flip Dude, out. If, gonna... if, if you do have a healthy selection of micro machines, put that shit on eBay. I'm just. I don't. It's good. It's, it's not healthy, but I do have a bunch of figurines that I got at uh, Gen Con last year. Mm. But I don't want them to get all messed up, so I don't know if I'd even use them. And, and besides, if Maybe. you're. you're oh, I'm almost 30 as well, and I don't think I can set traps for grown men anymore. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> assault. Do, that's assault. That's assault, brother. You know? So, um, so yeah, no, I've just been kind of, like, uh, trying to keep things together. I've been streaming a lot more, so um, so that's that's. Well, yeah, well. at least that coincided with the uh, temperature drop, so you can Oh, it, it's hang dropped out. dramatically. It's real cool. I, I had to close the window. It was too cold today. My nipples were getting pretty, pretty you know, pretty tight, pretty taut, you know? So. <laughs> Hot nipples. Um, also, I'd like to see that. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, um, I, I just I, and I'm going to go ahead and put it in chat again. <laughs> um, I just I, I I'm real I'm like I'm real big on testing people's humanity. That's my my new thing. I'm I'm, I'm not going to let the show notes too. So I mean, it needs to go in the show notes. I'm not going to let people get me down anymore. I'm just going to test their humanity. And if they don't if they don't pass my humanity test, and Jordan did not, so he's off. He's, he's off. off the list. <laughs> um, <laughs> By watching this YouTube monkey video, which is so fucking touching, it'll it'll give you like an erection, but not the type you should be embarrassed about, like the type that everybody gets. Um, it's that touching, like it's unbelievable, um, and it made me feel really good today. And uh, you know, I I you know, loneliness can only be cured by seeing chimpanzees being released back into the wild and and seeing the sunlight for the first time. So if anybody who's real like lonely, like watch this video, you'll be fine. I mean, you won't. Like, you will be fine for five minutes. And then, okay. <laughs> you know, the loneliness will set back in, trust me. But, um, but yeah, you got to watch that. So. Yeah, as soon as you find a related video that YouTube throws at you, because every other video is terrible. <laughs> so basically, this is what you'll look like when your wife gets home. <laughs> she'll parade me around in the streets and they'll should be confused yeah, go outside today but i was i was chased back in so uh like a chimpanzee i will be uh i will be indoors until i need to go out in the sunlight <laughs> just I, I wonder what her reaction will be when you, she shows up and you also have three chimpanzee friends and living with you <laughs> Well, that could be frightening. What if they just attack her and maul her? I'm like, they oh are, my god! Don't mess this with This is those. not what I wanted to happen. I thought this this was gonna be a celebration, a welcome home, but instead these monkeys are are yeah. consuming my wife, and for some reason, consuming her. <laughs> or better, or worse, they uh, try to mate with her. Oh yeah, she wouldn't like that. <laughs> she wouldn't like that at all. Uh, anything else going on, Ethan? Um, I watch the Cider House Rules. That's a good movie. Sounds like a it's another kind of touchy movie, but kind of really depressing as well. So, but yeah, I liked it. I liked it a lot. So yeah, did you watch it by yourself? 
<laughs> I, I wish I would have, but no, no, no. We watched that on Sunday. Okay. We had a movie day. We drank way too much on Saturday, made asses of ourselves, and so you know we kind of like stayed inside and slept <laughs> just because we felt bad. So, uh. Uh, but you know, good movie. Go see it. Fucking Toby, Toby McGuire before he got all stupid in, in Spider Man. Yeah, it's yeah, it's in theaters now. How old is that movie? It's pretty, I have, pretty I have old. no idea. Uh, Charlie's Thrones behind. Mm-hmm. I- oh. I- yeah, yeah, it was. Uh, that's okay. It's Mark, okay. It's okay. It's, it was okay. It was. It was fine. At least it wasn't Michael Caine's. Oh, I, you know what? I wouldn't mind seeing what Michael Caine's got to offer. <laughs> that man, that guy's a, amazing. I, I love it, Michael. Caine. I bet his ass looks sophisticated. Mm-hmm. I bet it's got spectacles and a tightly trimmed mustache. <laughs> <laughs> that ass has a monocle, which is actually more fitting. <laughs> um. I wasted my time catching up on Shark Week last week. I mm-hmm. uh, didn't think I would get oh. into it because we don't have cable, but I got so into it that I watched all the old seasons that are on the free streaming networks and then subscribed to it on Amazon for the the current season. So I kind of lost it a little bit because they had all this prehistoric shark stuff, and I got really into anything to do with Megalodon. And they basically made a <laughs> fake documentary of it, they ruined that, their reputation. Yeah, they, they kind of did. But yeah, it was, that was <laughs> oh awful. no, there's no kind about it. They've ruined their reputation completely. <laughs> People are so mad about that. I I didn't watch it because I'm disconnected. But I was like, well, yeah, of course, a megalodon. What's the outrage about? No it's silly. One, one could say they jumped the shark. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, you know, you know why people are pissed? Because they they released that mermaids video last year around this time. Yeah, they have a mermaids they kind of, video. It was a it was a video about how mermaids exist, and they like kind of they it gussied made it up. up. It w- they did make it up, but they made it seem like it, it was like nonfiction. I mean, they and the same thing with the megalodon okay. thing. It was like there's okay. Here's the thing: there's a lot of dumb people on the planet. A lot of dumb mm-hmm. people that think that half women, half fish exist, and that gigantic sharks exist, despite the fact that there's no sort of food for them in the ocean. Humpback whales. They explain it, man. Oh, there's not enough humpback whales. <laughs> He maybe can, for, can, maybe one single he megalodon. He can bite a humpback whale in half. They had footage from Japan of a half-eaten humpback whale on the beach. It had just been its tail had been sheared off. Been one bite. It was been amazing. Yeah, that's what happened. Uh, that's what happened. Discovery Channel is going I, down. See, the, I the, the, I thought yeah. it was dumb as hell, but I was entertained because it was dumb as hell. I did, like, but you're intelligent. You're an intelligent <laughs> man who, who can differentiate between fact and fiction. A lot of people aren't. So the people and that basically are what's happening is we're saying, look, these dumb people are believing this Discovery Channel. They're believing it. We need you to stop. They're so – like they've done Shark Week. I think they said what? It's like the 25th year, the 20th year or something like that. And It's been a long time, yeah. Yeah. I was like there's only so many – Shark documentaries you can do and then end it with, but humans are worse. That that always like moral threat they throw yeah. at the end. In the very end, is there always like a human that turns around and their eyes <laughs> yeah. like all over? Around. We're also the apex predator, and, and yeah. um, anyway, I had a good time with the megalodons. Kind of crazy, just think about. Um, and then they did. Um, they had like deep sea sharks off of the coast of oh, Japan. Yeah. And got to see a goblin shark, and that was pretty badass. So yeah, those are scary. Yeah. Um, and then, honestly, this week the thing I've gotten the most enjoyment out of is Giant Bomb's been experimenting with a bunch of their premium content. They've got just a bunch of random shows, and it actually kind of reminded uh, me of when we were trying to figure out the format for this show and uh, top video game podcast. Like they're just kind of recording stuff, putting it up, see how it goes. Who knows what's gonna happen. Anyway, they started the Power Bomb cast this week, which is basically five game journalists talking about wrestling. And it is hilarious because they know about as much about wrestling currently as I do. Like they like they just watch it in passing, yet once a month they're going to talk about wrestling and I don't know. It was just like it hit home for me. I want to start watching WWE Raw because or actually WWE NXT, they're like their minor yeah. league show. That looks what? Yeah, that sounds kind of badass. Like it's all in Hulu Plus and it has like all the up and coming dudes because I don't like any of the current dudes. So I don't know. Well, NBC just showed WrestleMania like two weeks ago. That's b- because the reason what? why I know. Yeah, they sh- they showed like an oh. edited, watered down version of it. So like people know what happened. 
what like the, like show? the most recent WrestleMania? Yeah, so they showed okay. it was just it was just the match between John Cena and The Rock. Okay, and like I saw. Spoiler people... alert: John Cena wins. <laughs> <laughs> John Cena yeah, wins like... and banishes The Rock to Fast and Furious Seven. But seriously, okay. like NBC, <laughs> like showed that in like prime time on I don't know what night of the week it was. I saw, and people... I sat there and watched the whole damn thing. I don't know why. <laughs> I, I gotta say, I'm a Cena fan. I have never seen him wrestle. Like but dude, he, he has, he has is... dedicated 300 visits to the Make a Wish Foundation. That yeah. guy has got to be—he's got a heart of cold, and he's yeah. full of they, muscles. At, he's like what the world needs right now. They actually talk, they talk uh, about that—that that they can't turn him heel. They can't like change his character because of like all the good stuff he does with his character. Yeah, yeah. and well, like remember when the kids would turn against him, and it would be terrible. Yeah. He's just not a good technical wrestler, no. though. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's the battle. That's the battle. But yeah. if you have a passing interest at all um, in in wrestling, I don't know. It just seemed like the perfect podcast because I don't like to get into the hardcore details. I don't want to follow this on a weekly basis. But like a monthly check in with dudes that used to like really be into it, but can only kind of casually watch it now. I don't know. It was entertaining and kind of opened my eyes to be like, what other bullshit can we talk about? Which would yeah. be like the no. intro to this show. <laughs> yeah. About tools, <laughs> tools. <yeah. laughs> we should have a tool cast. I think we are a tool cast. Um, yeah. <laughs> moving on to video games and the new releases of the week, guys. Something's happened in the last couple weeks. Uh, I think starting last week, there were just kind of a a small f- flood of video games, and like yeah. more and more are coming out now. So I. Like, there were a bunch of uh, downloads last week that I grabbed, and uh, it's going to keep on going this week. So, I think the big release of the week, um, depending on your background, might be DuckTales Remastered. Which, okay, there was, was the, there was the out, it was kind of the outrage of the week, too. People, like, yeah. it's not getting great, great reviews, and it sounds like this is a retro game that they didn't really change all that much. And guess what? DuckTales by today's gameplay standards is a bit difficult and, you know, it's a little old school. I don't... Yeah. Like, if this hadn't happened, we would be experiencing the outrage that they changed too much and it remained true. So I don't... I Honestly, when they announced DuckTales, I was like, I don't know how this game can win, but I love DuckTales and know yeah. what to expect, so There's I'll have no fun way. with it. There was, there was a reason I wrote the editorial that I wrote last week, because I've come to the consensus that gamers are going to bitch and complain no matter what you give them, um, which is really sad. So, because, yeah. you know, you would have never had DuckTales five years ago, because people would have been like, oh, whatever, who cares? You but know? if you like du- the DuckTales game, just realize what it is, and it will be yeah. that, and it'll, you'll be fine, and I can't wait to play it. So Don't be surprised it's not a first-person shooter, with you know, because <laughs> it's not. It doesn't have cover mechanics. It doesn't have RPG systems. It's just Ducktales. Um, the other big, re- another big release, uh, Payday Two, which is a couple of us have already picked up the game. Looking forward to playing some, some multiplayer heisting. Um, more I'm reading up on it. Um, since I didn't play Payday One at all, um, you know they're basically calling it Left for Dead, but for bank heists, and apparently it's supposed to be pretty difficult. Which hmm. I think I might get out of this what I wanted out of Monaco. Because Monaco was just like silly chaos the way we played it. But I don't know if Payday will even let you do that. Yeah, it looks tough. It does. And, and just hearing about the mechanics and stuff like that, it's not just shoot stuff and get from point A to point B. There's all kinds of stuff involved with it. It sounds really cool. I just, I, it's, a, it's a bad guy game. Sorry, guys. Robin Banks. There's nothing, there's no good morale that's going to come out of that unless you're like in North Korea and you're giving back to the people. Uh, <laughs> that's all I can think of. The only reason I can think of robbing a bank. I still have guilt about Saints Row 3, so. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if you'll be able to do this, Ethan, because I won't. Aaron and there's I were no talking way. about the entertainment value of just the crazy things you're going to yell at your friends like keep that old lady on the ground and you know <laughs> I could do it I'd help her up I'd help her up and I'd give her a little cup of tea shoot, shoot that old man security guard yeah can't do it no way uh, don't please don't cut that audio and p- keep it in context if you use it um yeah <laughs> Space Hulk for the PC I don't know much about that but the is that a that's a Warhammer thing, right? Am I? Yeah, yeah, Warhammer 40k. Uh, it was actually a game, a separate game, uh, smaller battles. Uh, but it's, it 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 looks like they've done a really good job of transitioning the board game to the 
uh, computer game. Uh, it's turn-based. I'll see. I, I'm, I'm kind of interested in it, but I want to see how well it, you know, it comes together. So. Well, when I when I saw the title of that, I thought I confused it with Planet Hulk. <laughs> oh yeah. And I got really excited. Sorry about yeah. that. Yeah. No. Completely different. Yeah. Um, Gone Home for the PC. Another digital download. Don't know much about that one. The other one I didn't know much about, but bought it anyway because the screenshots look cool. Was Hammer Watch. Yeah, how is that? You played that last night. Um, I think you need bros to play it. It was kind yeah, of boring like solo, it. but it the the art style is really really cool. Like, um, you know, it's it's all pixel retro graphics, but it's got some nice lighting and shadows. It plays mm-hmm. a lot like Gauntlet, but just like on a um, it's kind of a smaller scale. Like it's like Gauntlet meets Diablo, and. Mm-hmm. Mm. Um, there are a ton of enemies, but there's just not very much variety in that first stage. But I think you can blow through it and level up and have fun with your friends. And it's only like eight bucks, so I don't mm. I don't feel too bad about it. I'm gonna I did a game curious video of that I'll write a review later this week on it. Um, but uh, if you've got friends that are into it, I think it would be a lot of fun. Um, another Worms game, Clan Wars. Uh, the only thing I know. About this is that this they built this one the ground from the ground up just for the PC. All the other Worms releases were multi-platform and kind of console first, and they said this is their f- first one they've done for PC in a while. And there's all they, they've also Team Seventeen has said they're they're moving on from Worms for the near future. They're going to try some new stuff. So yeah, this might it's be the last last new Worms game for a while. Well, and how many of us just bought Worms Revolution on the PC? Yeah, yeah that that so this was kind of a little too soon. And also, yeah. I was looking at all the all the titles for all the Worms games. I can't tell any of them apart anymore. We were yeah. at work. We were trying to find like let's let's play some Worms, guys. Which game do we get? And there was just no clear answer. Like one thing we found is if you want to play PC versus Mac, that's just not possible. So yeah. um, that was pretty frustrating. But there's plenty of Worms games if you want them. They're all out there. <laughs> um. Charlie Murder. I'm going to be playing that game Thursday. I have been waiting on this brawler f- for three plus years at this point. This is um, the brawler with some RPG elements from um, Ska Studios. It's part of the Summer of Arcade. Uh, no, no leaked info yet about a PC release, but I'm holding out hope because um, the other... Uh, Summer of Arcade game, Brothers, is already coming out to PC by the end of the month, so maybe we'll see this jump, but um, it, I don't know if you like four-player brawlers, it looks to be the next great one to play. Mm. Plus punk music and an awesome soundtrack. Mm. Mm. Punk um, music, yeah, I'm still pissed at my parents, too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Let's see. On PSN, Mars, Warlogs, don't know anything about that. Thunder Wolves is the arcade helicopter shooter that's been out for PC for a little bit. Uh, Wii U has the Angry Bird trilogy, a Phineas and Ferb game. The original Donkey Kong is out on the eShop on 3DS. But what I want to talk about before we move on is this is the release week for Disney Infinity. Um... So I've been reading up on this because I live with a five-year-old and I showed her a trailer for Disney Infinity and she thought it looked pretty pretty awesome and, and like was mad at me that we couldn't play it right then because I'd showed, the, showed her the trailer on the TV. So she thought we had it. So that was, that was Dude. a mistake on my, <laughs> my behalf. But anyway, so it's out now. I kind of want to run down what I know about how it's being released and kind of get your guys' reaction because... Like, I knew that Disney was trying to do the Skylanders thing, which, you know, is just the toy I wish I had when I was a kid growing up. Like, it has just everything that I would have been interested in as a collector and as the toys that I played uh, as a kid. So they're doing that with Disney uh, Disney characters. <clears throat> so you buy the game for whatever platform uh, of your choosing. You buy the starter pack, which is $75. What that gets you is three characters, um, one guy from Pirates of the Caribbean, one from uh, The Incredibles, and one from Monsters, Inc. Those each, every character comes with a playset. So basically the Monster, Inc. world, the Pirates world, and um, yeah, so they come with their own worlds, The Incredibles world. And you use that character in that character's world, but you can also pull them out into a toy box mode where you can combine elements from all the games and kind of build your own playground. That's like the big draw. 
So that's what you get out of the box. And I kind of knew all that, but then digging into like everything else, um, there are also other characters that you can buy right out of the gate. You can buy the rest of the Incredibles, the other Monsters, Inc. characters that are $13 a pop. So if you want to play as Dash in your Incredibles playset, you've got to go buy him for 13 bucks. The good news is, like all those characters, you, you buy them once, they work on any platform. So, okay. Because I was kind of worried about what do I buy this for? I kind of want to buy it for the Wii U. That makes the most sense for me, but I also kind of doubt the future of the Wii U. And I don't really want to buy it on the 360 now. I just, so I was kind of torn there, but at least all that's hard, that hardware works across the board. The other, like, really nasty thing that they've created are these $5 power discs that you buy. And you set the power discs on your little, your little, what, are, what are, the control center or whatever where you put the characters to get them in the game and the power just like give your character superpowers and those are like kind of independent so you can buy these power ups or the theory is when you go to see like a Disney movie you'll get like limited edition or like special power disc that you can only get when you go to see the movie or buy the DVD or what have you and so you kind of can see where this is starting to go and this is going to be really dangerous because <laughs> I wanted to get this for Lily's birthday, but I don't know what door I'm opening. Don't do it. <laughs> it's dumb. That's a dumb thing to do. You're going to spend so much money on Disney movies and Disney, all kinds of Disney paraphernalia. You do that. You're going to turn into a Disney dealer. You can't live that lifestyle. You don't make enough money for that. Even Hollywood stars, when they start getting in that shit, they run out of money eventually. Tiny tools for you that you can give her. Yeah, yeah. Gonna say, give her a tool set, push her outside, say, get a job if you want your Disney Infinity. You know? <laughs> I think that's dangerous, dude. And I think it's dangerous for you as well because I think yeah. there's going to oh, be some conflict you know between you and a five-year-old. Uh, and that's just – those are the kind of things you see on I'll just, buy, I'll just buy two of everything. It'll be fine. Why would you push her down? Because she got my Infinity <laughs> figures. She got them yeah. – so, so basically what you're implying is – you can get it for the Wii U, but then you could get it for whatever other console. So technically, you could play them separately, right? Yes. Okay. Eh. No, I'm not going to enable you. <laughs> you're <laughs> trying to say. Yeah, switch your, yeah you're, not help, you're helping, but you're not helping. This is not for adults, right? Like, I shouldn't be, like, excited about this. It's okay. I mean, that Skylanders I'm not isn't for adults, but there were plenty of. But plenty of creepy adults play it and trade with their. I mean, I almost yeah. preteen friends. I'm not the yeah. only one that almost caved on that. Like I had serious conversations, but I'm glad I didn't. But you yeah. know, and I, I think I'm less attached to the Disney characters. But I don't know that hook of I know that Lily will really be into it if she plays it. I'm like, but yeah, I started doing that math. It's gonna get expensive quick because you don't want like, you know, I want. Yeah, you bought a you bought a Vita. You're fine. <laughs> Say. I can't actually play it on the Vita. I think it's like the one console. <laughs> well, buy, buy, I mean, buy it for the Wii U, and then someone will actually use that Wii U. So, I mean, you'll get some yeah, use out of it. That's you know? true. It's yeah. only going to cost you $5,000 to actually get use out of your Wii U. So, it's that's <laughs> yeah. so, be careful out there. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, be cautious, everybody. Um, Ethan, what have you been playing? Well, I've been playing a variety of games, and I think you and I can both speak to this first one. It's Spelunky, um, <laughs> which is a game that uh, I, I saw Josh Lee play, and he was so horribly frustrated. He was miserable. I I, he, was, he was miserable. I thought, well, you know, he and I kind of have similar tastes in games, but then I, then I realized, like, I used to think that, but I was like, nah, no, nah, we really don't at all. Um, I bought <laughs> it. I love it. I'm, I've put 10 I'm hours so... into it since I played it. I'm thrilled that you love it. I yeah. I would have bet against you. Like I'm, I, I would. I, and you're I was better at it than like I am. It. So, <laughs> well, I, I bought it for the novelty. I thought it would have been a hilarious game to stream and just get pissed off at, or just have fun with. Yeah. Um. But man, it's a technically it is a well put together game. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've I've read some people complaining about it being difficult and like the controls aren't good. Like those people aren't like I don't know where they're from. Like they must be the the most spoiled gamers on the planet because that game is tight across the board. Like when you die, it's your mistake. Mm-hmm. And what I like about it is the randomness is you're not learning how to get through levels. Like I, right. the biggest issue I always had with games back in the day and games like Super Meat Boy and stuff is there's memorization you need to do. Like you're not learning you're, you're learning the level layout. You're learning how to play it, but you have to play it exactly the same every time. And with Spelunky, what you're doing is you're learning technique. You're learning how to use the objects around you, and then you're applying that. And I like that idea of it, and that's why I like it so much because I don't feel like I've got to like know exactly what's coming up next. I just have to 
you know, assess the situation and react as need be. Oh, and yeah. I mean, I've had a, I mean, I've had a, a really excellent time with it. And um, I'm getting, I feel like I'm getting better. Um, though today I, I, I was so pissed. I woke up in the morning. And I realized you got to warm up before you do the daily challenge. Oh yeah, that's, which is that's something that we're role. doing. Like we're doing daily challenges. We're competing with each other. And I had some pretty good runs in the daily challenge. And today I woke up. I was a little bit croggy. Um, I thought, okay, well, I'll jump right in the daily challenge. Fucking the worst daily challenge I've had. So if you're gonna do the daily challenge, play a little bit and then get into it. But um, it's fun. I mean, I, I yeah. I, and I was just doing a lot of like, like reading about it and looking at the. Uh, wiki page because um, mm-hmm. just I want to see what all is in it because on the chat or on the stream yesterday someone was like oh you got to get the worm level and I was like what is that and you I mean there's all these secrets in this game I, I have no idea about and uh, it's man and they ah oh, fuck Derek you man <laughs> yeah, now, that, he, he knows what he's doing holy shit like that game is I mean I haven't even gotten to close to just unraveling every aspect of that game I and mean, there's so much to it um and, to, and 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 I found out today just how difficult it is to beat that game like completely like it, it seems almost impo- it is probably one of the biggest challenges um of any any game current currently right now like like wow. outside of Super Meat Boy like just how to line up getting to the end of that game, like like the actual end, is insane. And I don't think I'll ever <laughs> how's do it, it. How's it compared to FTL as far as having <laughs> all the right pieces fall into place at the right time? You know, FTL there's a lot more randomness to it. I think. I mean, obviously Spelunky is, is random, but there's a lot of skill to it. Whereas with FTL, um, having a good strat. I mean, they both had that similar that similar aspect of like you know what to do with the weapons you have. You know how to fight the enemies you're dealing with. You know how to deal with the obstacles, and you just have to tie stuff together. But, I mean, FTL, when you lose an FTL, a lot of the time it's just because the game's like, you know, go fuck yourself. Whereas with Spelunky, the randomness is 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 it controlled randomness, I want to feel like. You know, like, there's never been a time... I think there's been one level where I began, and right when I began, it was in the jungle level, there was a tribesman who had a boomerang, and so as soon as I entered the, the uh, arena... Uh, he threw the boomerang and knocked me into a bunch of spikes. So there was literally nothing I could have done <laughs> at that point. But outside of that, I mean, there's very few times that happens. So, I mean, if you take your time, um, and when I say take your time, I mean, I mean that very delicately because there's a ghost that's kind of come yeah, on. If you take too much time. If you, if you take too much time. But but even that, like, I was nervous about that. But, I mean, it, everything's timed out really well. Like, I yeah. I don't know, dude. That, that, that and FTL are two games that um, I think – my my three roguelikes that I go to at this point, and people are debating: Is this really roguelike? Yeah, yeah. You know, whatever. It, who fuck? It's got roguelike elements. You fucking die, the game's over. Um, FTL, Dungeon of Dreadmore, and um, this game are definitely there, and they're so fun. I mean, it, you feel satisfied getting to another level, and I like that. You know, I, I've been playing a lot of games, and it is true. Like games have gotten easy i mean it, games are a lot easier now they want you to finish the game derek you does not want you to fucking finish this game he i mean if you do i feel like you know th- that team will be excited about this but i mean you can just you know i remember watching an interview with him and it, he was kind of sly about kind of being like look you're gonna this is gonna be tough for you like this is not gonna be easy <laughs> and and again beating this game completely is it, it's going to separate like the men from the boys i mean it's gonna be Intense. Like I couldn't believe all the shit you have to do to the be able to. The damsels from the mankinis. The the damsels from the mankinis, exactly. So and I did and I've been I've been using like you can pick your own damsel, which is you, you can rescue them at the end yeah. of the stage, you get uh more health. And uh you know, when I had the female, um I wasn't super motivated to save her. I don't know what it was. <laughs> but as soon as I put a, a a blonde hunky dude and a speedo in there, like I was like I was I was gonna get him. him to the end, and that's and I killed myself like trying to get that dude to the end. So uh, we've I have, nicknamed him Mankini. I had the same thing, except I used the pug. So mm. I used the pup. I go after the puppy. That's puppies. cute. So, that is cute. Yeah. So have you played that at all, Jason? I don't know if you got on. No, I actually heard about it before I went um, right. on that uh, that trip, and so I was really excited when I got back to purchase it and play it. Because I had downloaded the original yeah. that they based it on, and I just didn't have any time to play it. So I was going to play that for just a little bit, then get the new one, and nice. then play through it. And yeah, why don't you, without just, internet, it just kind of... It's hard to download games without the internet. Yeah, so it's yeah. good to hear that you know not only uh, Ethan's enjoying it, but a lot yeah, of other people are as well. We've got five or six from our Horrible Night crew on the, on the leaderboards, so... Very nice. Uh, on a daily basis, so that's been, that's been fun. I have done absolutely horrendous <laughs> on on the daily challenges uh up to the last couple days but i have um i'm gonna actually record 
all my daily challenges and try to do like a highlight reel of all my deaths like weekly just to nice. see how that goes over because that's my favorite part about the game are the deaths that just happen out of fucking nowhere mm-hmm. they like and especially when you'll get killed and like your body will just ricochet off of three or four different things and it's just like i had six health how the hell did i die you just happen to hit these things in the right order and then land on spikes and it just doesn't matter and i i don't know i mean ethan you 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 were a part of that ev- the evening where we were streaming i want to be the guy so you've seen me just kind of laugh at all of my misfortunes and yeah. uh, Spelunky is just up there on that entertainment value for me for those types oh, of games. Did. Those deaths can be bad. But it's, <laughs> oh, and when you hit spikes in that game, like your character's face <laughs> goes from happy and adventurous to sad and just look, and you slide down this. I mean, yeah, it's it's oh, that's a great game. Go get that if you don't have that game right now. I think if you hate platformers, you're not going to like it. But if you're kind of worried about the challenge, like it's fun. Like it's a fun kind of challenge. You don't feel shitty while you're playing it. Like today, I think I got frustrated only because like I've been doing pretty good on the daily challenges and I lost right off. So I was like, ah, you know, I'm pissed now. So, uh, but no, very few. I mean, I haven't been, there's never been a time that I've been like, I've yelled a lot on the streams when I play. I played it for like four hours the other day on stream. I yelled a couple times, but it was, it was a friendship yell. It was a happiness yell. You know, you were Kurt, like you were the happiest man that I've heard drop, just drop that many F bombs. Like (laughs) it was at one point, like I, you know, I usually keep the stream open in the background. I, I, I'm listening to your audio more so than watching the actual video uh, while I'm doing work. And, and just sometimes it'll just come back and it's just, it's just a stream of profanities, but you're having a good time. It wasn't angry profane ethan it was uh-uh. it was happy profane ethan which is the yeah. best kind of profane ethan <laughs> yeah that's kind of ethan so yeah. Uh, yeah actually yeah that's how i prefer <laughs> prefer my ethan what else you been playing um and so the other game i picked up last week was guacamelee which mm-hmm. fucking another really good game uh yeah. same team that did mutant blobs attack i didn't realize mm-hmm. that until i drink was uh, playing the game drink box uh, Mutant Blobs Attack, I love. I mean, it was a great game, really challenging, and you can see some mechanics from that game that have been uh, modified and, and transitioned to fit into what Guacamelee is, which is a uh, Metroidvania-like <laughs> brawler. Uh, but it's, I mean, how everything's put together is I mean, it's such a great package. Like, holy shit. Like, playing those two games back-to-back, and those are two pretty difficult platforming games. Guacamelee has some... God, I Steam, think Guacamelee... Steam was such an asshole last week. They're just, like, yeah. <laughs> casually... I mean, sure, these are, like, ports of exclusive, previously exclusive games yeah. that some people have played a lot, but, like, they're just dropping these left and right. Oh, and, it's just... Yeah, you guys want to play these? <gasps> just these games? Oh, here, oh, have these two. Yeah. yeah. Fuck, no, fuck I mean, you! <laughs> but I think... But what got, got me about Guacamelee more... I mean, it's a tough game. Like, I'm just... Like, look... Yeah. Like, you, be, you play the beginning of the game, you're like, oh, this feels good, whatnot... It gets really tough really fast, and so I'm at a point where I'm really struggling. Um, but like the art design is incredible, the mm-hmm. animations are incredible, the music is incredible, the setting. Um, you know, you think of all uh, the uh, referential stuff. That is awesome. Like cool. I love to see how. Um, one, I love to see how they've taken uh, like uh, uh, Mexican culture and just like I mean. These guys, it, it's because the, the sad thing is, is with with Mexican culture, a lot of people are very like r- really like use it like kind of drog and in like a really derogatory way, and that's just like this game embodies yeah like what I mean the, the great aspects of Me- Mexican culture, which is really nice. Which I think like I don't don't remember a lot of people talking about that. Like that's mm-hmm. something that people kind of glossed over. I feel like um, mm-hmm. because again, it, it's a funny game, but it's not funny because it's making fun of something right. like it's just colorful the music's great i mean you feel really good and the whole luchador like like component to it is is awesome and, and it, again i thought it was like nacho libre in the very beginning so i was like oh this is just kind of silly but it just went i mean it just kept getting better and again that was another one of those games just like with spelunky like i sat like i streamed that um last week as well and i smiled the whole time like it was <laughs> it was awesome and and it, it is tough and it can be frustrating at times but again it comes down to really getting now that game requires you to really get some um jump times down and use your powers accordingly but i mean still it's it's really great fun the fighting's fun um and the checkpoints unlike mutant blobs attack which one of my issues with that was that some of the checkpoints are a little bit kind of tough yeah uh, this one's really 
really nice with checkpoints. That doesn't mean it's any less difficult, but it's pretty nice with checkpoints. So I'm excited about that game as well. I mean, it's tough those two games were released yeah. on the same fucking day. Like, that's pretty silly. But, um, yeah. I'm glad, you got, I'm glad you got to stream that because that was kind of locked away on my PS3 and we haven't jumped for the hardware to be able to stream those yet. So, um, yeah. yeah, that game, I, I played the hell out of it for a couple days. I still need to finish it, just like everything else on my list. But... Yeah, it's it's just a really well done game. It's really clever. Um, I think the the level design and how that matches up with the powers that you unlock is done really really well. Um, yeah. And I just I like all the special moves. I like the, how it ties into all the you know that he's a wrestler and most of the moves are you know more of the the hand to hand combat type stuff. And yeah, uh, um, it's just it's. I don't know. I remember when they announced the game, and you almost thought it was a joke. Like you hear the name Guacamelee, you don't like. I th- you think it's just kind of a, you know, a one-off, like just Mexican wrestling game that's gonna yeah gonna p- actually poke fun at the culture. But no, it it like, sh- uh, sheds a positive light on everything, and mm-hmm. um and then is a great game on top of it. So it's pretty mm-hmm. pretty neat. Highly recommend people checking that out. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Do it now. That one too. All these games we're gonna talk about. You have to buy immediately. Oh, after yeah, that. that's the you got a few tests. Your humanity tests. The monkey video. Buy guacamole. Buy spelunky, and then smile. So we're here <laughs> to help you. Um, last game I've been playing a shit ton of is Fallout New Vegas. Um, how many? How many? Of, how much time in the past week? Week or so? At least twenty hours. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> I was going to say at least, yeah, because I've streamed it multiple times. Yeah. And again, this is another one of those games where I loaded up some mods uh, just messing with that <clears throat> and was going to stream because th- this is a game that you can stream and have some fun with. And I got right back into it, and um, one of the mods I got was the uh, DMC's uh, texture pack, which is a 10 gigabyte texture pack that makes the game look fucking amazing. Like, mm. it's unreal. Um, that combined with um, I have a... Um, an effects pack. Uh, it, it's and, I, and I, I can't tell you what that is off the top of my head. It really it makes you know like the the lasers and the fire and all that kind of stuff look a lot better. Uh, a pack for making the faces not look so weird. Um, and I, I mean the game looks great. Like I, I, I like I, I I couldn't believe it when I was playing it. And it has made it a lot easier to play through it. But um, oh man, it's so exciting. That is I I you know Skyrim. I like the combat in Skyrim. It's it's the combat itself technically is better, but man, what Skyrim lacks is is the the Guns? chopping of the body parts. Like <laughs> oh, <laughs> you oh, like yeah. the dismemberment, I mean, do you? I, I don't know. Oh, it's awesome. Why doesn't Skyrim have that? I don't know. I have I have a corpse sitting at the entrance to Whiterun, like on a on a torch that may. Like, I'm pretty happy with some of the. At least I can I can make use of the dead bodies. But yeah, it would be nice to be able to dismember them, I guess. Yeah. And, and, and There's I no really way out of, out of that room. creepy statement. Yeah, <laughs> I, I know. Say, but, <laughs> but it's just because, like, I don't know, it's just with the way it feels, like when you're fighting one of those, and, and it's only bad guys I'm doing this to, so it's okay to dismember a bad guy, I guess is what we're trying to say, or a giant yes. gecko. Um, but man, oh, it hits so solidly. Oh, and that just smash. And I mean, because you can cut heads off in Skyrim, but they don't. It's always that slow motion, like, you know, this is me cutting a dude's head off. In this game, it just happens, and it happens quick. Did that? Um, cur- did Fallout Three do that? Was that just like that you, that Oblivion fall- era engine? Well, because it, it it was actually, I think it's just with the Fallout engine because huh. of the yeah. bats, because you could target, target because they the actually limbs. have actual limb damage, yep. which is what yep. they lack in the Elder Scrolls games. Uh, because you know when you we're playing Skyrim, even if you shoot someone in the head with an arrow, you're not getting, like, there's not a difference between uh, head contact and body contact. Yeah. Now, there, there's mods that adjust that, but but yeah. it's not you're, it's not the same thing as Fallout. Like, Fallout, you shoot them in the head, and you're, you're getting uh, critical hits or whatnot, but I'm running around with Veronica, who is a Brotherhood um, scribe, and she's yeah. got a power fist, mm-hmm. and she just knocks fucking heads right off. Like it is <laughs> awesome. I, yeah. And and I'm just I'll give you a teaser of a, a rotabulous moments in gaming that will be coming out next week. Um, but uh, a lot of head punching in that one. I'm just gonna say that I won't tell you anymore. Just a shit ton of head punching. <laughs> um, but I'm having a really good time with that, and I actually started a new character. But I've gone back to my old character because I picked up the DLC that I hadn't gotten yet. 
Um, actually, tonight I finally completed Old World Blues, and I'll be starting on Lonesome Road mm. um, later on in the week. So, yeah, I'm excited to got to get some closure with that game, but I think yeah. I've just opened something up as well. So, <clears throat> I, I haven't really checked in on... You know, New Vegas kind of got a bad rep when it was launched, just how buggy it, buggy it was. Um, and I don't really know like where this game stands as far as like people that really enjoyed Fallout Three, like where they where New Vegas fit. Because I honestly, and just aside from you, I just kind of assumed that everybody defaults to Fallout Three and kind of ignored New Vegas. But that might have just been me. I I feel like there was a split. I feel like the people that really wanted a different Fallout game kind of like we're okay with the bugs they, like you, you fought through it you know right. yeah it was really buggy in the beginning they got a lot of stuff fixed there's still some bugs but um to me there was just enough added to it uh, in terms of you know uh you know gameplay like with with fighting and that kind of stuff but also like what people forget about fallout 3 people people are very nostalgic about it but you spent a shit ton of time underground in fallout yep. 3 in huh. those subway tunnels and that sucks this game <laughs> yes you're in buildings sometimes but not to the extent you were in fallout 3 fallout 3 50 percent of that game was going through subway tunnels and that yeah. it was that wasn't fun and that was actually just it, it hmm. obviously had a lot to do with the fact that you know the technology wasn't quite there yet so they had to kind of you know uh, find a way to that. Yeah, but I mean, people forget that. Like, so when we debate Fallout Three, yes, maybe Fallout Three's uh, landscape there was a little bit. I don't know. I wouldn't even say there was a little bit more to it. I think it was comparing the two. Like, it was relatively bland. It felt a little bit more dense with things. Were, and there yeah, was, you were constrained. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, and uh, I think I was partial to just that DC setting too. Just the <laughs> kind of oh well, yeah, that yeah, backdrop yeah. a bit. Yeah. But. Huh. And the DC setting was cool, but I, I mean, again, like I just I, I think people forget that kind of stuff. But no, I mean, I'm surprised. Like I know your opinions, Ethan, but I'm kind of surprised. It sounds like Jason, you're you. This is a clear cut decision for you too. Yeah, I mean, I I enjoy New Vegas. I really didn't get into Fallout One or Two like right. back when they came out. I just uh, you know that was what around the same time like Diablo and stuff came out. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I I really wasn't you know, on board with those. I understood why people like them, but it just wasn't my type of game. So when sort of obviously the first person shooter, you know, Fallout 3 came out, I was like, no, oh, let me try it. I played it on, I'm pretty sure the Xbox 360. Um, and I liked the, the DC setting. I liked the variety of stuff, but I did feel sort of constrained to the environment. Whereas um, I felt like, like Ethan said, you know, the the variety and sort of the open worldness of New Vegas really huh. sort of... Uh, captured my attention more so than fallout 3 so yeah i i prefer new vegas quite a bit um and and of course you know like the vat system is just makes it so much better to be able to you know target certain things or like shoot a guy in the shoulder so he'll like turn and stuff like that you know just to play with the physics of it is is a lot of fun i think Mm -hmm. yeah sounds like i yeah i fucked up but i think you're right (laughs) there is there is a 50-50 split. I really do feel yeah. like there's a lot of people that love Fallout 3 yeah. didn't really like New Vegas. There's still a lot of people like, oh, Fallout 2 is the best. It should have been exactly the same, but, I, you know. Yeah, do do those people even talk to each other? Do the, like, 100% Fallout 3 guys versus the Fallout 2 guys, can they well, even be in the same room together? Probably, probably not. It's the same thing. There's, I mean, there's issues with Fallout 3 and the New Vegas guys. Like, it's like, dude, yeah. it's, oh, God, right. okay. They had, to go, they had to go somewhere with the series, and, it, and I thought they chose a very interesting you know, setting because it could have been really bland. It could have just been like the same like desert backdrop throughout the whole thing, but they did sort of selectively choose, you know, some major locations and then just sort of put a lot of variety in between. Like, Mm -hmm. because you would think it's weird. Like, Oh, I've got to travel from point A to point B in the middle of the desert. You think that would be boring, but somehow they make it not boring. That's cool. Yeah. So I, 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 you know, applaud them for that. And that's probably why, I think it's more enjoyable because the degree of difficulty of creating a game in the desert mm-hmm. is pretty high, I think. Mm-hmm. And they, they pulled it off. So that's cool. just where I stand on it. Cool. Well, um, I know, Jason, you're kind of ramping back up into gaming now that technology is back on your side. So yes. uh, where are you headed? What, what have you been up to? Well, I was a little bit worried uh, during my downtime that I talked about Timber and Stone the last time we uh, we did a podcast together. And so um, I talked about sort of how the game was really buggy. The 1.3 version was really buggy, so I decided to skip it. And mm-hmm. so I thought while I was gone that they were going to release something uh, like 1.4. I thought that was going to come out while I was gone. Surprisingly enough, like two days ago it came out. So I'm actually 
right on the cusp of them updating the game, so I feel like I'm not playing as much catch-up as I thought I would. Ah. So um, since that is a really popular video series on my YouTube channel, I thought um, that I would just try to jump right back into it. I actually tried to record a video of 1.2.1 as like a you know send off video in my uh, the software I use actually wasn't synced correctly and so I'm glad I figured that out before I tried to export it so I just was like screw it I'm jumping to 1.4 so actually before the podcast um, I started playing it and they've added um, a couple different things including uh, individual um, inventory for each of your settlers so whenever they go to gather materials, they actually have sort of like a personal inventory, mm -hmm. and then they've also added storage. So not it's not no it's not any longer like a universal storage. So like as soon as you collect something, it goes to the universal storage. You actually have to have your characters take that stuff back to a central location or to like a, a tool chest or a you know a place where you drop off like rocks and and dirt so and stuff like that. If so like one of the one of those characters like met an untimely fate. They would lose their stuff. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Mm. Yeah. It, to an extent. Yeah. That's how. It, I, except for maybe like armor and stuff. But yeah, if they were like collecting wood or something yeah. and they didn't bring it back, then it's just it. You just you just lose it. So it's a little bit more tedious in terms of somebody walking really far away, collecting as much stuff as they can because they can get. They have like a certain number of things that they can collect, and then they have to walk back. And of course, that stuff has mass, so mm. it slows them down. And so it, it just it's adds cool this, from like, the simulation side, though. <laughs> yeah, like it adds this really interesting real world aspect to the game, but at the same time, you just can't really like crank out um, a lot of stuff really quick. And plus, um, the enemies are a little bit more difficult, so you're going to run into like wolves now. I actually fought like uh, two wolves that took out one of my people and stuff like that. So they're just continuing to add the degree of difficulty. Um, but at the same time, sort of giving you more variety of stuff to play with, which uh, which I enjoy. So I won't uh, sort of harp on that too much longer. But uh, I do have a couple of videos coming out this week. So if you guys are curious, uh, I'll be able to talk about that a little bit. Yeah. Um, and then I, right before I left, I tried, because everyone was like, oh, you got to get to level 7 or whatever on uh, Borderlands 2, so I caught up to that, and then who knows where you guys are at at this point. So I think we've only played one session, um, and I think we're like the 9 and 10 range seems to be safe, but we also kind of found that it's not as big a deal as I thought for people just to jump in, and I think yeah. we're going to keep it kind of loose. So Yeah, so I played I mean, that on the PlayStation 3 and only played for about four hours at the most, um, and then, of course, it got... Uh, it was on sale during the um, Steam sale, so I, of course, picked it up because everybody else seemed to have it. And mm -hmm. I usually don't do that. Like, usually if I have <laughs> the one version, I don't sort of jump ship. So yeah. I did that for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I just... Uh, we, you know, we don't say thanks. We just laugh. Yeah, we just... <laughs> <laughs> so, actually, when my internet was down, I tried to... Um, I tried playing, like, an hour of that, and... I don't know. Like you can play without the internet, but I was just kind of like, "What's the point?" Because I bought it for the multiplayer aspect of it. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I, I I really haven't really jumped into too many things. I have a a, a number of things that I bought during the Steam sale that uh, I actually kind of bought just for myself, not actually to record any videos for. Um, so we'll see what happens there. I did purchase a Torchlight Two, but I've never played it. I actually picked it up, I think, because Aaron was playing it. Mm -hmm. um, it's a lot so. like Diablo. That's kind of what I thought. Well, <laughs> I thought I thought maybe I saw somebody streaming that at one point, and I yeah, was yeah. like, "This looks might have been you, Justin." It, yeah, both Aaron and I have have streamed it. Um, mm -hmm. So I picked it up, and you know, I'll, I'll probably jump in with that a couple times. And then I bought the Worms Revolution, of course, uh, based off of the stream that you guys did um, what weeks ago. So mm -hmm. I mean, I, like I said, it's just I'm not I, I'm kind of boring this week because I really haven't had a lot of time to sort of jump into the variety of stuff that I purchased. I also bought Fallout New Vegas for the PC, um, and I do want to jump back into that as well. Because there's, what, how three about, different endings? So. How about oh, by yeah. the time I you're on... I was on... looking at it today, there's like seven. Like, there's oh. a shit ton. Yeah. Okay. Oh, wow. So maybe I should play that, and that's all we can talk about next time you're on. <laughs> hey, well. We could have a Fallout New Vegas uh, I know like you. <laughs> three-year anniversary, two-year anniversary. Like, <laughs> I mean, we could. 
<laughs> but sure yeah, can. like I said, it, I, I'm just trying to get back into the swing of things, so uh, I'm not too terribly exciting on what I'm playing. But uh, and I've been trying to like watch catch up on all my YouTube subscriptions as well. Um, I haven't played really any Minecraft in a while, and I've that's probably a good thing. I kind of needed a vacation from that, but I'm oh, yeah. ready to jump back into that pretty pretty soon. I hope. Um, you're also still working on your PC build. How's that coming along? Uh, yeah, it's over. What, here. what new part do you have this week? <laughs> I don't. Uh, okay. I actually uh, we'll just say I got a speeding ticket in Texas. Oh, so that's not cheap. Was did, was that your celebration after you got out of Arkansas? <laughs> um, that was actually, yeah, it was like the last day we were there and cause we were traveling from Fort Worth to Dallas every day and it's about a 40 minute drive. And, um, oh, what's really weird about Texas is that their speed limits, um, go up and then down really quick and they That's don't cool. have a lot of signage. So awesome. Thanks. They got, Texas. They got, yeah. They got me on the last full day that we were there. So, uh, yeah, $190. Yikes. For, a speeding, for a speeding ticket, which would basically be any other remaining component that I, I need. I was going to try to tell you to buy a Vita with that money, but yeah. I won't. You know, I would, I would much gotten, rather buy a Vita at this point. <laughs> Aubrey's gotten about 10 tickets here in, in Germany. Uh, <laughs> 10 of those tickets, you know how much it equals to maybe 200 euro. Their tickets are like 20 euro, maybe. Jeez. They can't believe how much our tickets. I, I, I tell everybody here, I like, do not speed in the States. They're like, why? It's, you know, it's not that big of a deal. It's, uh, you know, it's a 200, or, you know, 190, $200 deal. They're like, what? What do you guys use that for? Your 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 infrastructure is horrible right now. And two of our tickets were for going too slow on the Autobahn. Yeah. Well, that's a scary. That's scary. I mean, I was. <laughs> I was go definitely going faster than I probably should have, but we were actually running a little late because my wife realized that uh, the things that started that day were earlier. So did I did you, it. I did it for her. Did you yeah. try to cry to get out of the ticket? No, I we did have our sort of stuff on, like our convention badges and stuff. So I thought maybe we would get away with that. Like, oh. like, look, I, you know, I'm just, I, I just told him, <laughs> I was like, we're running late. I've learned to just not deal with it. Like, it's yeah. just, I've never been able to talk out of a ticket. So, yeah, I don't know. I had, we had the stuff on. I was dressed up for the the convention, and um, it didn't matter. So I don't yeah. know if she she's always that, gotten that out sucks. of. She's always gotten out of tickets, but I was driving the whole trip, so I don't know. I'll 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 just chalk it up to uh, transportation fees, I guess. Yeah. Oh man, video ga- the video games feel sorry for you. But imagine the th- the amount of things that I could buy with one hundred ninety dollars on the Steam sale. Yeah, yep. no, yeah, like two thousand games probably. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but oh. yes, my my computer build is is actually um, pretty much where it was last time around. Well. Hopefully that that subsides and you can make some progress there. Totally. Or at least your video software cooperates so you can actually take care of what you're actually playing. That's yeah, important. exactly. Yeah, I don't know. That that happens every now and then, but uh, that's why that. you... Because yeah. even though you you like you make sure you test your microphone and stuff, that doesn't necessarily guarantee that at, over a period of time it's not going to get out of sync. So, yeah, whatever. I mean, it happens. Vi- videos and video games, they don't mix all that well. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay, what the hell have I been playing? Um, so, god damn it. Aaron, fucking stream like three hours of Papers, Please. Yeah. And that was the other game I was pissed off at Steam for just throwing that out there, too, in the same week yeah. as everything else. Oh, that came out last week, too. Yeah, it did. It was just oh, like shit. that back half of the week was just like, here, it, have a bunch probably- of awesome. It's probably a good idea that my internet was down because otherwise I wouldn't have no money at this point. And yeah, so, Papers, Please is, you know, it's the indie game where you check people's passports on the Eastern, fake Eastern Bloc. And, I, you know, I'd read about the premise. We talked to Josh Lee about it on one of our older podcasts. And so I, I thought I knew what to expect. And I was like, you know, oh, I might play that eventually. But, like, you know, that, that sounds really clever. They turn that in the game. That, that's, that's fun. Then I watched Aaron play the game for a while and just got super into it because when I can break down something into like a process that that I can steadily improve, improve upon, that taps into a part of my psyche that really border uh, it's borderline addictive when I start to enjoy a process like that. So this game just tapped into some, something in me where I could not put it put it down over the weekend. And um, beyond the just, like, 
me trying to just be the perfect, the the just the model borderline agent here, just and not screwing up any of my uh, denials or acceptance of, of people across the border. The fact that they just throw in so many little random story elements uh, when you know all these characters come up to you and just every day that you're there something happens that stands out and it's just it's it's so damn clever and so damn entertaining from the, just the little incidents that happen like from you know from terrorist bombings to like this one this one guy that just shows up every other day with he just doesn't have his shit together and you just kind of all laugh it off and he's like you're doing a great job and then the fact that all of this relates back to you have to get all process all these people so you can make enough money to take care of your family who yeah, <laughs> is in yeah, some yeah. shitty apartment that you have to keep the heat on. And, I don't know, um, you know, we were kind of goading Aaron to, like, let his mother-in-law die first, and I was telling him, like, the order of which people you should take care of, and just... I, I also know that I could never stream this game because there's just, just the... You have to judge people so harshly and just make these these calculated decisions that there's no way to play this game and not look like a total asshole. And man, I I play this game by the book. Like I, you know, I I don't not interested in your sob stories. Like that that dude is like, hey, my my wife's coming behind me. Make sure you know she you help her out. And it's like she didn't have all all her paperwork, man. I don't know what to fucking tell you. Oh yeah. I did not expect to get sucked in this game, and I it's all I was thinking about all weekend. Like, it was... I don't know if you guys... I, I've related this to, like, anybody that's done coding or programming. Like, if I get into a, a block of, like, six to eight hours where I'm just doing code, like, I will... I will dream about that shit. I will, like, wake up, like, solving yeah. problems, and I, w- I was waking up <laughs> like trying to process, like making sure I had all my shit organized. Like it was like I was still process, pro- processing all this paperwork, and I just and I couldn't I couldn't stop playing even when I wasn't playing the game. So I like it. Yeah, that, it would look like that. And, and I was watching that. And I was getting flashbacks to like I used to work for <laughs> um, a company that dealt with a lot of like denying people of services. I mean, you'd sometimes have to say, look, you can't have this, and you'd get the sob stories. And there was a few times, at one point, Aaron had to deny a woman, you know, getting into the country, or else she would have been shot. And I was just yeah. like, flashback, flashback, <laughs> flashback, you feel so guilty, because it, it affects you, like, you can get in really big trouble. And I was like, oh, my God. So I, I had to kind of, like, not watch that. And that's one of the reasons that, like, I was really into it, and I was like, I, I think that after a while, like, when you process people, and you yeah. have to disconnect yourself from them, it like you know for some people it's like oh this is clever this is interesting but for me I was just like oh I don't know like, so I almost picked it up until that point I was like you know what this maybe just send me back into a to a a, a, a reality that I don't want to be back into but talk about a fucking clever game there is oh no God. game like that out there no like I guess you could call it I mean it's almost a puzzle game but yeah. I, I couldn't think of how you would describe that I mean it's a it's a sim, it's a puzzle game, but yeah, talking about a clever fucking game, and and Josh Lee, that fucking hipster, was playing it before it was cool, you know? Yeah, he was. <laughs> I don't know. I I've think never I... heard of it, so uh, I, I mean, I'm definitely curious to know how it uh, it plays out. It sounds quite fascinating and quite uh, possibly um, dangerously I don't know. addictive. Yeah, yeah. It just seems kind of like should I stream I guess... that or should I just play it by myself and make all my own judgments? Play it a little bit and see how like racist you're gonna come across. Exactly, yeah. Like, because <laughs> I I feel like I would have to speak in some sort of like foreign accent. Like, yeah. do you have your papers? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I guess I expected it not to be as polished. Like, I think I thought it was almost like a Luden Dare type of experiment where it was like, like just one idea, but the rest of the game was kind of crap around it. But just, I mean, they they wrote twenty endings for the game. They wow. Um, then there's just, there's all this, these little character interactions, like with your boss, with the security guards that, you know, it's like, if you, if you detain more people, I get more money based on how many people, detain people I process. I can give you a cut of that, man. Like if you're just a bigger dick to these people, we can make some more money. And, you know, he's trying to get stuff on the side, just the little, the little side stuff beyond the fact that, like I said, I was just obsessed with like memorizing this this instruction manual, this like they've made up this whole fake region of the country, well, the whole, whole fake region of the world with all these made up countries with made up towns in them, and I just I wanted to know their you know the 
the symbols of their passports, which cities they they check in from. It was just, I mean, I went to a dark place. It was, <laughs> that was man, I was just cold and calculated behind that desk. It just it did didn't matter. It oh, it was scary. I was going to say, I'm glad you don't work in a service where you have to, like, <laughs> like <laughs> deny people or whatever. Because I think, because, you know, I feel like, you know, someone who does do some, that the programming side of things and whatnot, like you, there's right and there's wrong. Yeah. And that gray area is the conflict. You're like, nope, it's not. You, <laughs> here. Get the you don't out. have the paper. <laughs> and Sorry, you're going I, to die. I'd love to help you. Well, you're a child. You're being chased. Sorry. Well, Give me your fucking passport. <laughs> so while you're... What you're saying is you have to watch that monkey video after you play the game. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, in my in my defense, like I looked at it, like if I don't do my job right, my kid might not eat. That's like the. So there is. I'm not a total animal, but like, but yeah, yeah I didn't listen to anybody's shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man. Anyway, um, and happier video games. I'm assuming. Um, what else did I play? I played a. I ended up getting Dragon's Crown on the Vita, mm-hmm. and which has been good. I I I just don't. I don't hook up my PS3 very often. It's always like, you know, I have that HDMI cable that I'll just swap between the 360 and the PS3, but the PS3 gets neglected. Um, and so I've been. But Dragon's Crown is set up in such a way that it's easy to kind of play one mission and then put it down. So it actually lends itself well to a handheld experience. Game is game is gorgeous. It is, you know, it's got an adolescent art style, but VanillaWare still beyond beyond that. It's just amazing looking, great uh, music, great atmosphere. And so it's a brawler basically with heavy, heavy RPG elements. And I'm playing as a dwarf and smashing everything to bits and... The it has a heavy multiplayer element where you can play online with your friends, but it'll also throw in like it'll fill out the rest of your party with the three other um, uh, computer controlled characters, so you get to see everybody. And things just get really chaotic when you're you're on the battlefield, and um, you know it's 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 kind of weird with Charlie uh, Charlie Murder coming out this week too. Just these beat 'em ups that are trying to be more. I think Dragon's Crown's probably going to be an, end up being a lot more sophisticated in that and like in its gameplay than Char- uh, Charlie Murder, but um, it's still it's still just kind of unfortunate that it's held back by some um, some poor Japanese design choices. Um, well, I, I I type in Dragon's Crown in Google and I look at Google image search and I'm like, what? It's I mean it's off putting. It is off putting. Yeah. Um, it's like one of those like. The other reason, like, I don't want to play this game, like, on the TV in front of its right. kind of game of shame mm-hmm. element to it. And, like, it d- it doesn't cross any lines, but it's just, it just comes across as unnecessary. It's, yeah, I, it's over, it's a bit over the top. And I, and not even in, like, an attractive way. It's really weird. That's why, like, I'm really torn on it because I know that Polygon's review came out and people were given Polygon yeah. shit, which, whatever, like, review what you want. Like, people, I'm sorry, everybody, not everybody has the same opinion. Um, because you know, some a- an aspect of that review was like, look, it, it's it's visually, if you're off put, you're off put. Yeah. There's nothing you can say about it's it. Like I just suddenly make a brawler. It. It's it's not like it's gonna. I mean, a brawler like it, you can make it as deep as you want, but that's not gonna make up any any. I mean, because a brawler is not necessarily going to like completely change it because it's a brawler. That's a simple kind of game you know you can enhance it as much as you want but i mean just looking at it, like i thought all the I, I, the art style was great but there was also like a grotesque aspect to it and i often wonder like if that one was designing i'm not one that's going to be like oh everything's got to be pc you know I'm, I'm not jumping into that too much however i wonder where the fuck these art designers were for like yeah. the last two years because there's a debate going on right now and that to me was not that I'm saying they were being intentionally disrespectful, but I wonder how they felt that came across. You know what well, I mean? I think they were working with those dudes at Square Enix that are working on the the boob physics of the HD remakes of the Final Fantasy games. Like those guys were actually talking about, like they had conversations around that. It's just like uh-huh. there's there is a certain disconnect there. That um, yeah. anyway, it, I don't think this gets in the way. But like I said, it it does kind of make you. Give it a give it a second thought before you play it, but you know you block all that out. It's a great it's a great fucking game. The boss yeah. battles, the uh, as the action ramps up in this game, um, there's, it's really fun to play. You the the powers you get um, are really satisfying, and um, there's like there's plenty of loot to be had. There's just reasons to repeat these um, 
these quests a lot. It's it's just it's just really fun to play. It's it can be, you know, it's got some grinding aspects to it um, from the uh, from the RPG side, but it's but if you like that stuff, it's it's fantastic. So it's it's a lot more fun to play. Um, and much easier to recommend on that side. So um, if you do have a PS3 and Vita, it's 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 fantastic. How does it compare to Castle Crashers? It's much it's much more it's much deeper than Castle Crashers. Castle mm-hmm. Crashers is very um, I would say just much more easily accessible. Dra- Dragon Crown, Dra- Dragon's Crown is a little bit deeper, um, mm-hmm. and like there's there's definitely a lot of skill involved with some like. Um, some higher level combo play like you can i can see the difficulty ramping up pretty pretty high with um um some of the enemies and that sort of thing so it, it's gonna I, I i have a feeling it's gonna get really difficult but yeah uh but like i said the when you get to like the enemy design of some of these bosses and they're like you know screen filling bosses it's it's pretty amazing looking mm-hmm. yeah because i saw a lot of parallels with the two games just because you know, uh, it, there's Brawler. I mean, obviously, Castle Crashers is older. It's a smaller game. It has some RPG elements, but like the bosses and that kind of stuff. But I wondered in terms of pay, people picking it up, you know, like you're, you're going to have to invest more than 20 hours in this game, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's, there's a lot to it. So, yeah. Okay. Um, then I busted out a couple quick, uh, game curiouses. Again, I played, I played Hammer Watch. I didn't, didn't really expect to pick that up at all. Um, like, if you like Gauntlet, this is like <laughs> the best Gauntlet game I've played in a long time, and I can't <laughs> wait to I can't wait to play play it co-op. It has local yeah. and online co-op, so um, so it it actually looks like it should control almost like a twin stick shooter, but it uses the face buttons. I use the gamepad. Um, use the face buttons to shoot in eight different directions, um, and but I also found those those four character classes I played as a ranger. I mean the paladin. The paladin does not have a projectile. Like he has a his magic ability is actually a dash where he'll just like blow through a stream of guys, and um, the enemies in this game are just so plentiful that I started to find like it's actually kind of helpful to do like a, a kiting technique to just get them all bunched up together and attack them in mass. Mm-hmm. Um, and then um, like the only thing you're picking up throughout the game are uh, there's some magic refills, some health refills, and then just just money. And then randomly throughout the levels, there are uh, merchants that you buy upgrades from, like just skill upgrades, weapon upgrades, all that. So there's no there's no leveling up, there's no ex- experience points, um, and that took me a while to figure out. But um, I like to see like it, it's kind of you can only go so fast when you're playing it solo. I'd like if it could, if the pace picks up when you're playing multiplayer, I think it'll really shine. But I was kind of it was kind of monotonous after a while because. Um, I mean, it was it was twenty minutes. I'm guessing twenty minutes before I even got hit once. Like it was like I was just safely destroying mm-hmm. all of these enemies. And you know when you you're fighting bats, worms, and beetles for fifteen m- minutes straight, it's just like I need give me something else. Like even like the bigger enemies that was started to throw at me towards the end what weren't doing it for me. So um, it needs to ramp up, but has a lot of potential, and especially for an eight dollar game. It's it's got plenty going on. So. Cool. Uh, then I played Beat Buddy, <laughs> which I'm still not sure what I think about this game, but it's a rhythm-based platforming game. Um, really nice 2D art style, uh, kind of more vector graphics than uh, like pixel art. But the thing that really set it apart at the beginning is like it does this whole intro with the voiceover, and I thought the dude was stuttering and like had a speech impediment, but then you start listening to it, it's like, no, it sees like being remixed like a dj like everything in this world is music based and there are a ton of characters that like beatbox while they're talking to you and it's charming as fuck (laughs) and um the gameplay itself you just kind of it's more like puzzle platforming and navigating everything towards towards a beat and um that can that didn't really stand out all that much to me but the the personality and the the game world itself all the characters was it was really really cool um and it hopefully can build after the you know the half hour or so that i played but um so it had some potential there but it was definitely different it was fun it kind of actually reminded me of some of the music stuff that rayman uh has been trying to do lately uh on a you know on a simpler uh lower budget level but um looks great um i think it'll appeal to a certain group of people 
very very certain pe- group of people yeah. that we don't yeah. like we hate people no, like this <laughs> last game we played with beatboxing in it come on yeah i like beatboxing <laughs> um that's it pretty much for games um kind of going into what we're working on um i'm still continuing my weekly skyrim and earthbound streams um although i might take a break this week for uh payday 2 for earthbound might get pushed back a week but in Skyrim, I um, am continuing my quest down the Dark Brotherhood line. I did a couple, a couple of those those quests, and that that storyline's getting interesting pretty quickly. Um, man, I killed a, a <laughs> viciously killed a old woman running an orphanage, and uh, right in front of a bunch of kids. Yeah, uh, I I remember doing that. But she was she was, she was, she was a- mean though. Yeah. I didn't do it in front of the kids, though. I'm I'm a little bit nicer. Oh no, yeah, I just rounded the she corner. She deserved it. She was like in the middle of yelling at them, and I rounded the corner, and shot her in the face with an arrow, and they're yep. like, "Yay, she's dead!" Oh, they were like, they were okay with it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but that's yeah, that's still been a lot of fun to stream. Lydia is still sticking with me. So hey, that's the way to do it, man. <laughs> You'd be good uh, to that that Lydia. That's love. That's love. And then uh, Earthbound's going well. Uh, uh, behind the scenes, I'm working on trying to, um, I think I said this last week, but bump up the quality of our podcast videos that actually go up on YouTube. So I'm doing some graphic work on top of uh, what we're producing and doing some I'm working on a couple video intros for the shows. So uh, when those come out, I expect heavy critique and lots of uh, pointing and laughing. So. Yeah. Those will come out soon. And then, like I said, I've got like four, probably four Game Curious videos just sitting in the queue. So as soon as I can actually write those reviews up, I'll uh, I'll put those up on the site. And then editorials-wise, things have kind of calmed down. We've been in, we've just been in game-playing mode. I have a feeling mm-hmm. like as the, as the game releases ramp up, it gives us more topics to kind of talk about and, and hopefully the editorials come back. But as soon as I get this video stuff uh, knocked out, um, I'm going to try to take a fresh look at like our editorial content because that's kind of what we came here to do and uh, getting that back out on a regular basis is is, is important to us. Justin Gifford's kind of jumped in and Ethan's been pretty consistent with his editorials, but uh, a couple of me included, we've kind of fallen off with our with, with that content. So I want to figure out how to keep that going alongside of all of our, our video stuff and podcasts. So, yeah. Uh, Ethan, you've been playing New Vegas. Is there anything else on on the on the queue for you? Um, so now that the weather's actually gotten better, um, you know, preparation for games calm for next week. Uh, we're still trying to decide how we're going to cover that. Uh, it'll be very guerrilla. Uh, so I'll do I'll do my best as a one man <laughs> operating crew. I think I've got a friend that's going to go down with me, but I'm not 100 percent sure. Um, videos those will those will be popping up a little bit more. I've kind of hit a bottleneck. That I've got maybe five or six games that I want to write a reflex review on. And today it just, everything in my brain just, you know, came to, <laughs> I just, it's nothing was coming out. So I delayed my editorial for today until tomorrow. But, um, I think I, I really do. I'm going to really focus on, um, getting those reflex reviews out and kind of, kind of getting away from just looking at the games from like a mechanical and like a graphics perspective and actually just talk about like, you know, the kind of feelings that, 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 come out of them because I, I, I found myself getting way too technical with some of those reviews and <laughs> frankly I really like uh, the way Rock Paper Shotgun uh, does their they just, they uh, just what I think flow and react man yeah and I, and I like that because to me that's how I write normally and it's really tough to get if we're not going to do a rated review uh, which we, we don't do as often because we play so many games I've kind of like I've kind of made my peace with that I'm kind of like you know uh, it's almost like to play through a game at this point, if it's not really great, you're going to put it down. But mm-hmm. I kind of like to deal with that beginning feeling because that's what makes people buy games. And that's kind of mm-hmm. where my focus is going to come with those. So I, I want to write about Shadowrun Returns. I want to write about Spelunky, um, Guacamelee, those kind of games. Um, I also want to keep uh, my editorials going. Uh, I, I've, I've, I, my last, <laughs> last week's article was pretty... I wouldn't say negative, but it was. I, I've really been noticing like just a lot of aspects of the industry that... Um, I'm maybe disappointed in. Um, I'm, I'm going to try not to be uh, an angry person in reference to it, but I'm just. I really, um, as our uh, as our hobby, which is a hobby, is beginning to mature. I just feel like 
people are kind of falling behind a little bit. I've noticed it that much more now. Now, so my editorials have kind of had there's a little bit of a sting to it, you know, because it, it is a little bit frustrating. Is you'd think you'd grow with this this hobby, but people kind of aren't at this point. Well, so that I almost wrote a really mean article today, so I didn't. <laughs> so I, I avoided doing that. Which I want to go back to the games because I think. I was focusing on the industry, and I wasn't playing games because I was so focused on, like, all these fuckers and all this stuff. And, like, I've been playing a lot of games <laughs> now. Fuckers, man. Fuckers. I like this. You know, like, I like the games, and I'll I don't, be... you know, care about <laughs> anyone else. You know what I mean? Like, that's what it should be about, you know? Yeah, I mean, I want to get back to some of our more, you know, our, our the silly stuff we do, too. Like, the I learned something today is that that kind yeah. of feeling. But, but I will be really curious to see where your head's at after Gamescom, after, like... Kind of yeah. being in it for a while and seeing that side because yeah, you'll I, have I, an interesting perspective on it. I it's think. either going to be really good or really bad, and I'm trying to go <laughs> with an open mind to it. But I mean, conventions are tough because it, it's a it, it. Gen Con was great and it was fun, but we were there for two days and we were there, kind of covering it, but more having fun with it. Uh, I'm going and I'm going to try to talk to people and I I want to see how it is here in Europe because we know how conventions go in the states for the most part. I want to see if it's different here, um, and I want to see if you know people are actually learning to like enjoy games as opposed to make it their lifestyle. You know what I mean? Because I mean, I feel like that's kind of my trouble with some people right now is, is I feel like people do miss out on all kinds of other stuff when they're so focused on gaming. And when you're so focused on one thing, that's what make you makes you react to negative things. That's what makes you you know uh, threaten to rape you know women that are talking about why games are bad for people. That's why you attack websites because they reviewed a game that you loved in a negative way. And people are getting too intense. That you love so, that you haven't played yet. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, it's just, it, it, I don't know. There's just, it's so silly. So I want to, I hope, hopefully the convention brings the best out of me and I get back to like, oh yeah, the industry, okay. Hey, if, it, if it just gives you another person, another indie developer to talk about flying sharks with, yeah, I think it's a successful trip. So. I'd love that too. Yeah, and, and again, and, and there's some more. Uh, I'm trying to line up some more interviews with some people. Um, uh, do you have like a little audio recorder? You might be able to, like, yeah, I've got do a bunch some of on the spot type a lot, of yeah, a lot more equipment than I did last time. Um, you can expect from me. I'm going to try to update stuff on a regular basis. I know there may be some big announcements at Gamescom. I know that at least um, there's going to be an announcement about XCOM Enemy Within. Um, which is either going to be uh, an expansion or a DLC for XCOM Enemy Unknown. Uh, that's oh. kind of a rumor going about, but I mean, right. they're supposed to make an announcement. Was it Enemy, um, enemy Found? Enemy Understood? Enemy Within. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Enemy, yeah. Yeah, unknown, yeah. Enemy, enemy come to, come to, come to uh, grips with, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but so I, hopefully some cool shit comes out of it. I, you know what would be my dream, though, is if they announce Fallout 4. <laughs> they won't. Yeah. They won't, yeah. but that'd be great. Um. So yeah, well, you probably won't see Ethan on the podcast next week, um, unless we get really crazy. But um, but we'll be looking forward to checking in with you in in, in two weeks when you get back. So, uh, Jason, anything you want to shout out as far as you kind of talked about what you're working on video wise and what's coming up? But may, what's going on with Evolution and gaming? What's upcoming there? Well, let's see. We just came out with Futurama which is a mm-hmm. game that was on the Xbox, of course, uh, sort of talking about those games that uh, sort of had a uh, previous product, uh, a, you know, a joined to it. Uh, oh, man, I can't even think of what's coming up this Friday. Give me one second. But we did do <laughs> we did do Crazy Taxi, which I tried to release on um, Friday, but that didn't go over very well. Uh, <laughs> hoops. That's right. Andy uh, says Hoops. So the Nintendo... Oh, nice. The wow. Nintendo... A uh, hoops game with the uh, the women in it from way back yonder. <laughs> That's not funny. It it is very funny actually. So uh, I think Arch Rivals got... had women in it as well. Yeah, yeah. So we've got that coming up on uh, Friday, if I'm not mistaken. Plus, uh, I believe Turok is next Tuesday. So oh uh, shit, that'll be on uh, that'll be on Andy's channel. Cool. And uh, some other stuff as well. So uh, yeah, we've just basically been sort of uh, evolving that in terms of trying to give you guys a little bit of history of you know the games themselves I like and the also variety. some uh, yeah some gameplay. We try to do theme weeks and sometimes it doesn't work out, but uh, for the most part, uh, he does uh, post videos on Tuesday and I post mm-hmm. videos on Friday. So dinosaur week next week. 
Uh, yeah, because actually, if I'm not mistaken, my video next Friday, since this is Turok, mine will be the Jurassic Park game for the Genesis. Oh, shit. There you go. Yeah, yeah so... I think we'll make Ethan do like a commentary track on top of your commentary. <laughs> hey, that 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 works for us. <laughs> Redundant would that be? <laughs> hey, 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 It'll hey just this be is like Ethan that, Moses. <laughs> that secondary Let's mystery uh, science three, theater three thousand, like all of our previous videos. Let's stop hey. all the podcasts, just redo everything, and talk about how big idiots we were. And <laughs> yeah, and so that that will get us up to a certain point because we usually record, I think, four weeks at a time, so eight videos total. Um, but yeah, that'll, uh, I don't know what we've got in store. Uh, as long as my Nintendo works out, we're going to try to probably get some more uh, original Nintendo games in the mix, but, uh, yeah, who knows? Cool. Um, and then, um, Andy's actually going to guest on our Thursday show, top video game podcast. Yeah. So we'll check in with him for the first time. That'll be, that'll be fun. He did play Borderlands with us the other week. So you have heard him and he's uh mangler one Oh three in the chat. So, yeah. uh, check out their like I said, they they post Evolution Gaming twice a week, Tuesdays and Fridays, and uh, we post it on our social channels as well. So, pretty cool retro podcast. Um, all right, guys, game pitches. Looks oh, a little shoot. calmer than last week without Josh <laughs> Lee's scribbling. Um, let's see. I was actually trying to spin off of our our, our first idea of like how to how do you make heists how do you make bake heists for good um chat mentioned like maybe you're actually stealing for orphans but um i thought we could start there as far as what would make you play payday how would you feel good about the end of end of payday ethan well i'd either need to be stealing money from aliens or okay. zombies <gasps> or people that i know um are stealing shit from zombies what would you steal from zombies what do they um, have I would, what, what do they have? What? Well, I mean, zombies have bank accounts. Like, if I knew <laughs> the person I was stealing from, their bank account was, like, about to be closed. Like, the, the bank teller is like, well, they died, so well, I'll wait till tomorrow to do that. I would willingly steal from that bank account, you know? <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah, zombies, maybe a vamp, maybe vampires. What if, in the future, uh, okay. vampires start opening, like, a shit ton of bank accounts, and they've just got too much money in there. They're holding on to that stuff. They save, because they don't need much. And so, you break in, you steal vampires, like, or, like, the Loch Ness Monster. I would steal from the Loch Ness Monster a fucking second. <laughs> or Sasquatch. <laughs> Sasquatch. Yeah. A Sasquatch. You know, he's 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 got quite the savings account, I think. <laughs> he does. He's like, oh my god, someone's been in my bank account. It's full of beef jerky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jason, what's your what's your pitch here? Well, I I had to try to top the whole uh, you know, unicorn apocalypse <laughs> from a couple good. weeks back, and I actually watched that back solely just for that whole. Uh, that did not go the way I thought it would. It actually was way better than I thought. So, um, <laughs> Stickers! Yeah. Uh, I actually told my wife about it, and she got very excited about it. <laughs> That's what, that was the exact target audience we're going for. Yeah, she was she was a, a big fan of that. So, uh, I don't know. I was kind of thinking, you know, what hasn't been, been done? Because, you know, you're getting a lot of these strange sort of uh, concept games going on. But... Uh, and, and for some reason, the Magic School Bus came to mind, and uh, there was a, a whole thing of that where they went inside someone's body, and so, so I was kind of thinking like some sort of art game or first-person shooter set inside the human body would Inner be space. kind of yeah, it would be kind of crazy. I'd so play, I don't know I, if it's been done yet or not, but I actually I would I would play an inter inter space game. Dennis Quaid? Would Dennis Quaid be part of it? Would Martin Short be part of it? Martin Short's not doing shit right now. Quaid, a little bit busy, but Martin Short could come in on that. Yeah, he's, want... he's, he's doing pretty much nothing other than, uh, what, How I Met Your Mother? Oh, is he? So, yeah, he was uh, um, the boss for, uh, oh, what's his face? Uh, Jason Siegel's character uh, at the law firm. I think uh, you could do an inside the body game. I, yeah. As long as Dennis Quaid is going inside the body of Randy Quaid. <laughs> Whoa, dude! Dirt. Whoa! Out of context, that is awful. <laughs> Somebody make a sound pipe, or pipe, or pipe, 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 make a sound pipe of that. Make a sound bite of Justin you, saying that, dude. That you, the way you said it too, was it was less about what you said, more about the tone. <laughs> you demanded <laughs> that Dennis Quaid went inside Randy Quaid's body. Well, it was for a specific reason because it actually you go inside his body 
at that pivotal scene in Independence Day because you've got to get his adrenaline <laughs> high enough for him to bring down the spaceship. Oh. This is what it all hinges on. He, he's just really lethargic, and, and he's like, I don't know if I can do it. And then you just erupt into there. And then um, think about the ultimate sacrifice that Dennis Quaid is making in that in that regard. Because so Randy wait, Quaid, is, he, he's also dying in this. Did, did, Dennis Quaid sacrifices his life by going inside Randy Quaid. So Randy Quaid can sacrifice his life by going inside the alien spaceship. Yeah. <laughs> Independence Day 2 is actually I'm like yours. a prequel. Or it was like, you know, happening like maybe Independence Day 2 should be from Dennis Quaid's perspective as he's inside Randy Quaid's character who during the game, I mean, or during the movie, Randy Quaid's character is like a drunk. And everyone's yeah. like being real shitty to him. You know what I mean? That could be good. And you're dodging alcohol and, and whatever fumes <laughs> come from a, a bug plane. Um, and <laughs> the visuals for that are just so silly. Like that's just a silly – Awesome. Yeah, I mean, because think about it. I mean, if you're inside someone's body and you're so like everything's like obviously to a much major scale, you have no idea what you're looking at. You know. Yeah. So, so think about that. I think it would be kind of. It's not, that's why I kind of you know pitched it as a, like an <gasps> art game. Uh, it could be that could be like a cool series. Like whatever you're doing in these people's bodies, like then then it zooms out after your successful mission because you've helped them accomplish whatever like little set piece moment one yeah. would be saving saving the world from aliens the other um, well hopefully it's less you know violent than uh you know that surgeon generator or whatever oh yeah that would be our cool. simulator well, yeah i haven't played that yet yeah you cut people open you go into it but here's actually let me take this to a next level okay so what if the aliens were working with the terminators from skynet from the terminator movies they sent miniature terminators back in time <gasps> into randy quaid's body uh. to him because they knew he's gonna win to prevent him from doing it and as dennis quaid and a team of professionals you go inside randy quaid's body to prevent the terminators that came from the future from preventing the apocalypse that's about to happen Checkmate. <laughs> Check, please. Check, please. Yeah, that's right. I don't know <laughs> if I want this to happen now. <laughs> I don't how know is if he, it'd be very artsy. How was Randy Quaid related to John Connor? Uh, it, was his, it was his drunk uncle. Okay. <laughs> his drunk uncle. Well, know. this is the prequel then, because originally Randy when Quaid you, When you was, time travel, it's tough to tell if it's a prequel or a sequel or an actual... Like, what is... Okay, so what is a movie... This, what do you call it when, like, it's not... Before or after, it's during it from a, from a different perspective. Like, what do you call that movie? An interquel. Interquel? I'm just interquel. making words up. I like so. it. We can go with it. I think somebody's <laughs> used that before. Uh, uh, there is actually like, a term for that, but I can't. An alternate timeline, I think. Which it, reminds me, I kind of want them to all of a sudden make another Assassin's Creed 2 game. Like, right, right in the middle of all this, like, announce another Ezio game. An inter- just, that would be an interquel. Could he be inside of? Is he going to be inside of his body? Assassinating Terminators? Isn't that the plot? Of, yeah. It, <laughs> who, um, who are you? I, but, I'm a 15th century Italian person, and you must be. Are you Dennis Quaid? I'm such a huge fan. I don't know why. How I know your movies? I just do. But, and Will but, Smith punches him in the face. To, <laughs> to pull it. To pull it back in. Randy's body. <laughs> <laughs> to pull it back on topic, though, I mean, imagine, so, like, you have to go in, like, okay, you have to go, like, fight, I don't know, the common cold or whatever. So they send you into somebody's body, but they don't tell you what anything looks like. So here you are with, like, you know, a mini machine gun shooting, you know, I don't know, someone's white blood cell count to, to bits. They have no idea, you know. You're like, oh, that, that looks like a cold there. And then it's like, oh, then the person dies, and then you lose the game. Because you just don't know anything. It's just like, it just sends you in there and it gives you a random mission and then you just have to figure it out. And your name was Ebola virus. Yeah, so, I don't know. That, that could be a cool roguelike game. Like, well, you, it, like, it would be educational too because yeah. you would learn what stuff looks it's like. It's like a Dr. House roguelike. Yeah. Oh, just kind of <laughs> But you're inside the body. Yes. Of, of Randy Quaid. Dr. House go inside the of body. Randy Quaid. <laughs> <laughs> Randy Quaid. Randy Quaid. I'm pretty sure he's not doing anything right now. You could probably get the rights to yeah. whatever you wanted yeah. for I can Randy imagine Quaid. that that episode of House where Randy Quaid shows up and, <laughs> and House's only solution is to shrink Call Tennis Quaid and get inside <laughs> Randy immediately. We need to get inside this man immediately. Okay, well, let me get you a scalpel. You don't understand what I'm saying. We need to this be is the only way inside I can get the diagnosis. You have to go through his urethra. Untense yep. his butthole and let's get in there now. <laughs> we don't have the time to talk about this. 
<laughs> um, I want to give a shout out to Happy Happy Matt because I think he's pitched something that you might be able to run with, Ethan. Um, a cooking show sim game. You've gotten you've gotten into the kitchen lately. Oh shit! What make your make your game where you make the ultimate grilled cheese? Oh. Well, there's a game. I actually did a cheap and dirty gamer about a game where you ran a taco stand. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was like a puzzle type game, but there was timing involved, and so it was almost like Diner Dash combined with uh, like those warrior game Wario games. <laughs> Not the um, Warriors. The Warrior. The Warriors. <laughs> the movie. Um, those Come territorial. Those territorial taco stands. Oh, yes. The Furies are coming for you. Uh, was it the apocalypse in that movie? I don't remember. <laughs> what the fuck was that movie even about? Gang wars, man. AIDS. What, what, like, was, it, was it like, a, yeah, I, I, thought, I thought there was something to it. Um, I mean, how would you do that? What kind of pressure could you introduce to someone making a grilled cheese? Because a grilled cheese is what, probably the least okay, let's, pressure yeah, let's, situation. What, in what situation... Is grilled cheese? Does does the world hinge on grilled cheese? When Gordon well, Ramsay's involved Randy in Quay's it, character from Independence Day ate a lot of grilled cheese. <laughs> I would Maybe that's how you deliver Dennis Quaid into him. We found another prequel. He's gonna know if you give him an injection. He's gonna know. <laughs> give him this grilled cheese sandwich. Dennis Quaid oh, he gets it. between the loaves. <laughs> he'll, he'll eat it. <laughs> the ultimate grilled cheese is the delivery system for. This is just a cannon that just revolves around getting one brother or cousin or however they're related inside another. That's just that's all. <laughs> uh, gosh, we're, we're lucky we only know about two of the Quades, or this would go on all night. How many Quades are? There? Are they like the bald ones? I think there's got to be four, right? <laughs> is there like a Lance Quaid? <laughs> it's just like I want to be inside Randy. <laughs> Lance, Lance sounds annoying. Oh, okay. he is. <laughs> like the, oh, shit. I'm glad we didn't go down the path of the Baldwins. <laughs> yeah. that, well, that's for another show. Quades versus Baldwins. Oh, that's another game. You didn't even... <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. I would how love many, that game. How many Quades does it take to bring down all the Baldwins? Well, how many Baldwins are there? There's Alec, Steven... 20? John, <laughs> Big Frank... <laughs> Tony, <laughs> Doctor Richard, Alicia, Alicia, uh, Shaniqua, mm-hmm. Shaniqua Malcolm, the one that's just the symbol. Yeah, Sergio. Gary Busey Baldwin. <laughs> Gary, Gary Busey Baldwin. Oh, man, this is. All right, I'm jotting down. We are going to on a future show revisit the Baldwins and Gary Busey. But we'll leave you with on that note. So, oh, God. Shit. Guys, it's been fun. Chat, thanks for hanging out. Um, if you're listening to this afterwards, uh, give us a review on iTunes. Help support the show. And Night Force Action Report will be back next week. We'll see you then. Oh, that got me in the chuckle muscle. Oh. <laughs>